My name is Paman Zamangmele from Loka Village Foods and we are here at the Seat of Change for Food Lovers Market this week and really my expectation in this program, not besides becoming a winner, but mostly it's just to understand the, and gain insights around the market and the trends that we're heading to as a country, but also some of the expectation that buyers are looking for from suppliers and be able to understand how I need to position my brand in order to be retailer ready. So I'm hoping to gain that at the end of this week. I am so excited to be part of the top 10 of the Food Lovers Market Bootcamp. Um, our focus as Bethel Farm is sustainability and impact. And I'm so excited to be around a company that is socially responsible. And my expectations is to really to grow throughout the process and um, to learn more about what to expect from buyers and to grow in the market and to get that market access that Bethel Farm needs to really make a difference in people's lives. Um, my expectation for this is to come out having learned a lot on how to grow my business, how to get uh, more shelf space. It's not that your passion is going to change, but what you thought you were going to do with your passion is probably going to change depending on how long you've been going. Sometimes when you don't think you're ready to at least try something, and I'm not talking about going to see a buyer, that's a different level of trying. I'm talking about events, shows, smaller customers on the way that you think, oh, I'm not really sure, go and have the conversation anyway. Seven years we ran a business called Fresh Pack, which was a supplier to the Oki Bazaars of pre-packed fruit and veg and, and all the fresh fruit and veg. Our big suppliers always threaten little, uh, big uh, customers always threaten little suppliers. So we said, no, let's spread our eggs a bit and we opened our first store. And we opened Fruit and Veg City in Kenilworth in Access Park. And that was our first store, it was about 700 square meters. And from day one, it just flew. And then as we opened, we decided, okay, we're gonna put juice on tap. And then one of the farmers said, why don't you sell milk on tap? And then one of the, well, somebody came and said, do a little bit of bakery and stuff like that. Because nobody was doing food, fresh food, on that scale before. And Food Lovers Market started brand. Now we had to rebrand. It was a difficult choice to rebrand because Food Lovers City had become a household name. Everybody in South Africa knew it as Food Lovers City. In fact, today, still, people call Food Lovers Market Fruit and Veg or Fruit and Veg City still today. <laughs> and that was nearly 12 years ago now. And now we've got 330 fresh tops in our brand. One of the biggest growing departments for us in Food Lovers Market over the last five years has been the grocery division. The grocery, we call it ambient groceries and perishable division. The important part for us is to not lose the core business which is fruit and veg and meat and fresh. So whilst groceries must and can grow, we certainly will not lose that theatre of foods that you have when you walk into a food lover's market. We are looking to roll that out in this current year, we did it last year. And then we provide you with weekly reports on the production process that the farmer is doing every single day. This is from the farm on site, so, so from orchard to bottle, all natural, uh, gluten free, over a long period, of five months okay. per harvest. And we no longer process the product ourselves, we don't do the chopping in-house, we used to do that. Um, regarding the speed dating, I was very nervous, especially meeting with Stephen and Vito yesterday. And we tend to think that these people are robots and they're actually just human beings. Um, and that I realized today, it went so well. It was like an exercise all on its own. It was busy and everywhere, but what a lovely experience um, meeting these guys. I mean, they are experts in what they do and to learn from them is, is what a great opportunity. How can we actually train communities in sustainable beekeeping, conservation, 
provide them with implements, set up these sanctuaries and then buy back the produce from them in order to improve their livelihoods. The future is around engaging um, as customers. People are questioning, people are asking and Food Lovers has the opportunity to be first. But I think it's an opportunity as a, as a, as a retailer to come in first, tell the story that we're telling. Let's get African foods represented in the global value table but make it easy for the customer. Any apple that is undersized, oversized, had a slight blemish, uh, we, were, we were selling for, for juice or for concentrate. In 2013, we decided that was enough. We're going we're gonna to create a cider brand. In 2018, that was realized in terms of our, our cidery and, and, and taste group. Hence, Loxstonia Cider. One day I was driving out of Inanda with three youth farmers that were busy building a vertical farm within a primary school in the community. And I shared with them my idea of consolidating the fresh produce from township farmers in order to meet the bulk market requirements of commercial markets. So we spent a few minutes brainstorming on a really exciting name that would garner trust on the market and that's when we decided on Gussie Farmers Market. So the biggest problem um, small businesses are facing is that even though they have a good quality product, they don't have access to sustainable markets. And AquaGrowth, a small aquaponic farm in Sanin, had this exact problem. They produced a lot of fresh produce, but they couldn't sell everything. And we obviously saw this as a wonderful opportunity. So we started cooking preserves by buying and using the produce that they couldn't sell. The question is why are we still interested in, in, in rooibos? Because rooibos is actually trending. Um, millennials these days are huge into healthy drinks and healthy drinks options and they start making their own iced teas. They are brewing kombuchas and they demand premium quality. They will not take any watered down products and even if they use less, they want premium. And it's not really fair that there should be a winner but unfortunately he's a winner, or fortunately he's a winner for the person who won. What a fantastic product, what a great presentation. Porsche, well done! <laughs> Congratulations, you're the winner of our Seeds of Change competition. How do you feel? Lost for words. <laughs> the most part of it, lost, lost for words. Lost for words. Everybody was amazing. Really, everyone was amazing. And we just had to be that one business that wins. So it's, it's, really, it's really beyond me. What is this going to mean for your business? It's the communities that are really going to be benefiting totally it's the bees that are going to be benefiting because for us it's saying if we can maintain a 90% occupancy rate in the bee sanctuaries then we have won because honey is just a gift from the bees for all these things that we are putting in place to protect them. Why is it so important that we support small suppliers? Well I must tell you it's, it's been a fantastic week and from Food Lovers Market's point of view from our values and what we're trying to to achieve and how we're trying to touch lives and change lives. It ticked all the boxes. It was a fantastic initiative. So well done to everybody and well done to all the participants. This is something that is priceless and I'm truly grateful for Food Lovers Market and the Social Enterprise Academy for giving us this opportunity.